They said it couldn't be done. They said it wouldn't last. White man, black man. America F1. America F1 coming to you straight from San Francisco, California. Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. Yeah, I told you, 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 I told you. Last year, 2023, summer break, I told you that Ferrari had went to Lewis Hamilton and Fred Vassour had offered him $40 million to come and sign with Ferrari. Interesting story. He signed, right? He's... Lewis is going to Ferrari in 2025, right? We all know that, right? That's the news that's breaking today. That's the breaking news. America F1, me, Sherm Tillman, told you this last year. 2023, summer break. I told you. Okay. Enough patting myself on the back. $40 million last year. What has happened since then that made Lewis say, enough, I'm going to Ferrari? Is it just the red car allure that every top driver wants to drive for Ferrari? No, it's not just that. It's a lot of things. It's when they were negotiating the contract for the two-year contract that Lewis signed with Mercedes. He wanted to be a brand ambassador for Mercedes. He wanted to have a lifelong contract with Mercedes. It didn't happen. They didn't sign Lewis as a brand ambassador for his life. So that's one strike against Mercedes. Other strike, Mercedes typically hires from within. Um, all the other teams are poaching everybody. They poach, poach, poach. They take the best. They offer them a contract and see if it'll stick. So, got my little notes here. I'm going to have to read because I did a little homework. Louis, Louis Serra. He was an engineer for Mercedes. He was head of the vehicle performance division. He went to Ferrari. Hmm. Louis... And Sarah were on the same page about the direction that the 2023 car should go. They should get rid of the side pods. They should put the cockpit a little smaller. Lewis likes it. It was too, too far forward, right? He wanted it a little bit smaller. They didn't want to do it. They kept the side pods. They kept the direction that they wanted to go in. They didn't want to go in the direction that Lewis said. You know, there's something to be said about people, feel, instead of this move in all the sports to all these statistics. Statistical analysis says, well, we ran the model and the model said this. It's always not about that. That's just a piece of a puzzle. But all the best managers, you take that information in. And then you got to go by feel. What do you feel? What does your driver feel? What is your heart telling you? That's always better than the computer. The computer is just information. And you take that information in with all this other data. And it helps you in those margins where you want to make a decision. But sometimes you just gotta go with your heart. Now Lewis had been with this team since, well he's been with the Mercedes brand since the start. But, you know, we're going way back to 2013, man. So 10 years he's been with the team. I think they know the value that Lewis brings. They definitely know the advertising money. They definitely know the marketing ability of Lewis. And when people say, well, no one's bigger than F1. Well, Lewis Hamilton just proved it right there. Because Ferrari, just on the news, three to four billion bucks. 
stock's up. Wait till you see Lewis and Red. That stock's gonna shoot up like nobody's business. And I'll bet you we're doing the show out in, in the elements today because I wanted to get my walk in. You know, I tore my, I had an accident, tore my uh, knee up. And part of the rehab is, you know, the new rehab is you just gotta get out there and you gotta get it working again. You gotta get it moving. You know, I'm gonna do everything I can to uh, avoid surgery. I just don't want surgery. Anyhow, I digress. Let me go back to the story. So, I was lucky enough to go to Monza this year. Oh, so awesome. Uh, my wife is Italian. Um, I love Italy. The Tifosi was awesome. Everybody was so nice. Everybody was so caring, so into the red car. I went down from my seats to get water. It was a little hot. It was a little hot that day. It wasn't super hot, but it was hot, you know? So I went down to get water. They got the vending machine. You put your money in. You get the water. And I had bought a Ferrari shirt. You know, when in Rome, I mean... Yeah, I'm a Lewis fan, and I followed him from McLaren to Mercedes, and originally, you know, I got into Formula One a long time ago because of Schumacher. That was when he was at Ferrari. So, really, we're just coming full circle here. Um, so, I'm going to get the water. I have my Ferrari stuff on, and I guess because I'm black, the guy goes, I saw some fan down there. And he goes, oh, are you a Lewis fan? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'm a Lewis fan, you know, but I like Charles, I like, I like Ferrari, I like Carlos, you know, uh, I'm a fan of Formula One, you know, as a uh, person hosting, co-hosting a Formula One show, <laughs> of course, I have to like everybody, but, you know, we all have the drivers that we really follow and the drivers that we really like, you know, you know, Lewis is really one of the reasons why I watch so Formula One so vigorously and go around the world traveling to watch Formula One. Anyhow, he was wearing a Mercedes shirt, Italian fan, wearing a Mercedes shirt. He's like, ah, so you uh, you like Lewis, but you're wearing Ferrari gear. And I was like, yeah, you know, went in Rome. And he's like, yeah, but guess what? One day, the Lewis, he will, he will wear the, he will wear the red. He's like, believe me, they will wear the red before it's over. Fans right. Lewis is gonna wear the red. Now, we talked about Sarah moving to uh, Ferrari, leaving Mercedes. One of the engineers who was in line with Lewis is telling Mercedes that they need to change the design, which they didn't. Then we all, already talked about that Lewis wanted to be an ambassador like for life for Mercedes and they said no then right we talked about that Ferrari had offered Lewis 40 million dollars last summer break and we talked about that Ferrari stock is already up three to four billion dollars just today where does that leave Carlos Sainz now we all we also talked about in previous shows that Carlos Sainz is slated for the Audi project. But we all know that Audi's just not gonna come out the gate like podium, 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 podium. You know, it's gonna take some time. So where else could Carlos go? Could he go to Mercedes? Probably. Could he even go back to Red Bull after Perez probably retires after this year? Maybe. But I think a lot of doors had just opened up for Carlos Sainz. I know he, a lot of Ferrari fans like him. I love Carlos Sainz. I think he's one of the most, I'm not going to say underrated because he's won races. I think he's one of the least appreciated good drivers on the grid. If you listen to his feedback, if you listen to 
things that Ferrari has told him, like, park the car. Remember in uh, Vegas, they told him, it's overheating, park the car. Carlos was like, no, it's good. I'll be all right. As soon as I get to clean air. Got to clean air, fine. What about in Singapore when he won his race? He's backing him up. Engineers had no idea what he was doing. What are you doing? You know, pick up your pace. I know what I'm doing. Many times you hear on the radio, Carlos Sainz almost being the strategist for Ferrari. Many times. Maybe they don't like that because we remember when we go back to when Sebastian Vettel was with the team and we saw like on uh, Drive to Survive, the little interactions, he was like, why would I do that? That's stupid. Oh, because you drive for the brand. It's Ferrari. It's Ferrari. He goes, yeah, but that doesn't make any sense. Go back and watch those shows where Vettel was at Ferrari. Like, you can see his look like, what, what's wrong with these people, you know? Now, Charles and Lewis are friends. You know, Lewis lives in Monaco. Charles lives in Monaco. Charles just signed another extension for his contract. They had to have talked about, well, Lewis is going to come over and... How, how are you going to feel about that? Like, what how, what's the dynamic? Remember, Charles speaks Italian. Lewis doesn't speak Italian. He better start learning some... Uh, he better start taking lessons, brother. Take some lessons in Italian. Because you don't... Everybody loves Charles. Good-looking kid. I mean, he has model looks. And I'm a guy, and I can say it. It's all right. And so does Lewis. But he's already there. Charles is already there. How does that affect the Tafosi? And how do they look at Charles and Lewis? I would say embrace both. Uh, that's what I would say. Because both of them are going to be great for the brand. They're both uh, hell of a drivers. Uh, also remember that Charles was on pole a lot of times last year. Charles is quick over one lap. And I think he'll learn from Lewis because... Some of the things that Lewis will bring is you can't win the race on the first lap. Charles, while a good driver, you know, he makes he makes some mistakes. And maybe some of Lewis's knowledge in Formula One will help Charles. And I think this is kind of like Schumacher going to Mercedes when they had Rosberg and kind of leading them into when Lewis got there. Like, because I think Ferrari's on the cusp. They won the only race, non-Red Bull race last year. They were on pole quite a bit. A lot of second places. Their car was better than Mercedes' car last year. So, I think that relationship will work well. I think Fred Vasseur we just have to make sure we don't have a thing where they're crashing into each other uh, because of the pressure that Charles will be under because of the speed and knowledge that Lewis is going to bring to the table. Okay. Remember, Lewis said, I don't think the side pods are the way to go. Still went that way. I need to be the cockpit. I'm too far back. I need to be up more. Still didn't listen. I want to be the brand ambassador. I want to be here for life. No. <sighs> Monster's going with Lewis. And remember, Lewis is a worldwide celebrity what does that leave Mercedes Benz well they have uh, Andrea Kimi Antolini going to F2 this year he's a prodigy uh, he's 17 years old he's won everything he's fast he's fast he's quick Well, say he won F2, would you bring him right to the home team? Uh, when you could probably send him to Williams and, you know, get him a couple years in there. Well, they, 
Lewis went right to McLaren, so it could happen. What also could happen? Yeah, it's raining. You see, it's raining. Yeah, it's coming down here. Uh, but what also can happen? Total Wolf has been spotted already calling. Guess who? Fernando Alonso. Yeah, he's 42. But for most of the season, half the season, all the way up, up until um, uh, Austria, he was pretty much second almost every time. Second, third, second, third, second, third, second, third. So he still has it. I mean, Fernando, Fernando's phenomenal. He, he's still ready to go. Because you have to think, would Carlos Sainz even go to Mercedes? But that would leave George as the team leader. And where does that leave George Russell? If Fernando comes, I like George, but he's going to be like Lewis. He's going to be faster than George. He's going to have, he's going to be quicker because it's Fernando. He's an all-time great. When you go up against all-time greats, the all-time greats are better than you are. That's just how it is. Like, you're not an all-time great yet. You haven't, won, you haven't won a championship or even been in a championship fight. So, you know, George is probably like, oh, well, who are we going to get? Because you're not going to bring Schumacher, I don't think. I don't think Schumacher would, I don't think that would be a good fit. That wouldn't make any sense to me. But you never know. They, they want Schumacher in that car because they think of the name. But when you're losing Lewis Hamilton, you got to replace him with another big name, I would say. And so I wouldn't put it past Mercedes to go after Fernando because now you're putting another world championship, uh, two-time world championship winner in your car. And it's still, because George maybe he's not ready yet to lead the team and maybe they know something you know with all the data that maybe George is a good driver but he, you know he's not going to be a multiple multiple world champion we don't know that George still out uh, but I say it's a great day for the red car it's a great day for the Tafosi. it's a great day for F1 now, here's my conspiracy fit. Spin. Did I say thin? Thin mints. I don't know why I say thin. Spin to win. Uh, here's my conspiracy moment. Now, we all know that Andretti, with Cadillac and GM Cadillac, so GM's backing, was denied by the FIA for whatever reason, and they got killed. And I do mean killed on the internet. People putting up all... All the races that, you know, Andretti's team has won in all the different series and, you know, the cachet that they have. They tried to say that, <laughs> that Andretti wasn't ready to win Formula One, that they would be in the back of the grid, that they didn't think that they brought a team that would be able to win and produce in Formula One. What a crock of crap. It's Andretti, baby. The Andretti family. That is racing here in America. And when you have three races in America, Las Vegas, Austin, and Miami, and rumors are to probably, they, they just uh, got the name for Chicago, Formula One, Chicago, Chicago F1, all those type of names. And they just got that name in branding. So they bring another race. So that'd be four races in America. And you don't want to bring an American team that's building a factory in Indianapolis? Huh? That makes no sense. Look at this gorgeous background while we're walking. It's not like, uh, it's not like the doing the show in the studio. But you know, sometimes you gotta do different things, make things different. Uh, our studio should look different this year. We're building one in my home. Building, gonna tear a room out, paint it, do all the things, and get it ready for doing our show in a studio made just for that, which is awesome. 
Um, so, finishing my conspiracy theory, do you think that this news dropped today about Lewis Hamilton? Because they, they could have dropped it last week. They could have dropped it because from, like I said, they've been talking about this since summer of 2023. They signed Charles the other day. He had to know. So they could have dropped that news before Andretti. They dropped the news about Andretti yesterday in the get rid of the stink that everybody on the internet was complaining about. They dropped the Lewis Hamilton news today. Now no one's talking about Andretti. That's gone. No one's talking about that. Everyone's talking about Lewis Hamilton going to Ferrari. There's my conspiracy theory. Tell me what you think. It makes sense. It's just like big government when don't look over here, look over there. It's the same thing. Same thing. It's, it's, I'm not going to say it's marketing 101, but it's spin doctor 101. When you want to spin something, that's how, that's how they do it. So, that's it for today's show. Lewis Hamilton to Ferrari. I also think there's a 15% chance that maybe he could go this year. And the reason why I say that, because things like that have happened where you have a transfer. They could transfer Lewis to Ferrari and Carlos Sainz to Mercedes, and they could do it right now. Because now, how much information is Lewis Hamilton going to get in the car, Mercedes? Like, they're not going to give him all the information uh, on what they're doing with the car for 25, previewing the car for 26. How's that work? And with Carlos Sainz, too, how's that work for him? If you know he's leaving, how much information is he going to get? Now, will they put George as the lead car, even though Hamilton beat him last year? And if they do that, won't that make Lewis just more pissed off? So, to avoid all that, just listen to me. Listen. Listen. To avoid all that, maybe the transfer should happen now. And the reason why I say that is not only what I just told you, but there's no goodbye song. There's no swan song in Formula One. On to the next champion, on to the next driver. I don't want to see what Lewis has built and accomplished at Mercedes go down in sour grapes where they're giving information to George, they're not giving it to Lewis, where certain people aren't talking to Lewis now, where he can't go in different parts of the building now, and vice versa, same thing with Carlos Sainz. I don't want to see both of those drivers have to do that or go through that. It makes both teams look bad if they do do that. And if it does come out, which of course it will, it always does. It's not, it wouldn't be cool walking by the golf course right now. Um, so I think that transfer could happen. And I think if I'm Lewis's people and I'm the people at Ferrari, I'd make it happen. Why? You're saying, Let's ha make it happen before testing. So Lewis can get used to the Ferrari car. Carlos can get used to the Mercedes car. It happens in sports all the time. One day you're playing for one team. The next day you're playing for somebody else. So there's really no reason to go through the 2025 season like with Lewis wearing the Merck brand and Carlos Sainz wearing the Ferrari brand. Do the switch now. Make it a clean break. I, I'd almost bet that Lewis Hamilton will be a, bra a brand ambassador for the Ferrari team. Because that's what he wanted with Mercedes. I'll bet you Fred Fasor gave it to him. And what a, who better to be a spokesman for your brand? than to have Lewis Hamilton 
teamed up with Charles Leclerc. Two good looking young men. Well, they're not young, but two good looking men who can race their asses off. And I can almost see Lewis winning his championship and then retiring or staying around to help Charles get his first. Because what Charles needs really is somebody just calming him down on some of those places where he makes mistakes when he's in the lead or some of those spots where he could secure points, but he pushes the car too much and the car breaks down, or he pushes the car too much and he makes a silly mistake. Like sometimes he's always pushing the limit of the car, but once you find that limit, you gotta take the points. And I think that's the difference and that's the thing that Charles needs to learn. Sometimes you just take the points, man. Sometimes you're not always gonna be first. But second points are good, third points are good, and in a long season, that makes the difference in a championship fight. America F1, we did it, baby. We told you, we told you, we told you, we told you. Keep on racing, everybody. You can't wait till the Formula One season. And what better time to make a transfer and see Lewis Hamilton in the red. All the merchandise for Ferrari is going to go through the roof. Mercedes probably lost a lot of fans. A lot. Now, <laughs> the funny thing is, it's like <laughs> all the black people around the world who have all this Mercedes gear Right now, they're either burning it or, or, or putting it on eBay to sell and they're bu buying Ferrari gear. <laughs> Sherman Tillman, America F1. Keep on racing, everybody. There's been a bit of speculation in the media recently with regards to your future partner at Ferrari. Um, what do you look for in a teammate? <laughs> Hello, Lewis. <laughs> um, 